that we have been together the whole day, isn't it? Praise the Lord. This morning, we have already offered our first fruit to the Lord. Amen. Getting up from our beds, opening up, opening our eyes, is already a blessing. Amen. Amen. Ang dami-daming tao ngayon who are not able to wake up. Amen. Amen. Ang dami-daming tao ngayon who are in the emergency room or in the hospital fighting for their lives. Amen. Ang dami-daming tao ngayon who are dying to do everything to be in our shoes right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who among us here is not suffering any problems at all? Nobody raised their hands. So does that mean we are having one or two? Are we suffering? Are we in pain? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because our topic for today, we'll be talking a lot about that. The pain and suffering. But of course, if there is pain and suffering, don't worry. You have our God. Amen? So, the very, um, the title of today's message is Staying Faithful Under Trials. Can, can we all read that once again? Staying Faithful Under Trials. Amen. So, there is one character in the Bible who very, um, who could be the perfect example of our topic for to tonight. I always say today. Today, yeah, it's still today. Amen. So, we would be learning a lot of things from this book, and particularly, we will be learning from this person in the Bible name, Job. So, our preaching or our topic will be found um, from Job 1 to 42, but of course, we will not tackle it all. We will say what is important to us. Everything is important, so I, I encourage you, brethren, that if you have time, read the whole, chapter, the whole book of Job, because it will give us an encouragement. If you are feeling down, if you are suffering, if you're having affliction, then it is good for us that we can say, I am not the only one. I am not alone. No. And the Bible is very, um, the Bible really wants to, to teach us. So we'll be learning a lot of things, a lot of um, we will be learning some encouragements from Job. First things first, we always hear this. We always, you know, even us, you know, from in ourselves, we always hear this. Especially when, when we are on our own righteousness, we will say, why am I suffering this? Why am I undergoing this? I'm a good person. Amen. Have you ever asked that question to yourself? Have you ever, ever asked this question to yourselves? Sino po? Can you raise your hands? Why do righteous suffer? Why do good person suffer? Bakit ako naghihirap? Wala naman ako pinatapakan sa tao. In my own eyes, I am a good person. Amen? Who can relate to this question? Diba? Wala naman akong, hindi naman ako masamang tao. Why do I suffer? Well, as human as we are, we fall into this bait. We always ask, bakit ako? Diba? We always, or 
one way or another, we have been in this position, asking God, Lord, why not ako? Eh, sino pa? Gusto mo ba yung katibahay mo? Gusto mo ba yung katabi mo? Amen? So, why do righteous people suffer? So, before we answer that, um, actually, I, I just wanted to, this is a disclaimer. The, the, uh, with this question, there is no really definite answer to this. But we will learn as we study this book. Amen? So, how do you read this? Job. <laughs> Job. Job. The first time I read this, I said, Job. Of course, that is how we were taught, right? But this evening or tonight, we're going to learn, of course, the right pronunciation of this word. So, it's like Job, American English, Job plus B. So, it's Job. Can you all say it? Job. Amen. So we've learned one thing already tonight. Job. <laughs> Be proud of yourselves. So, okay. Job is a, if you're going to read the whole book of, the whole book of Job, you will think that is Job a real person? Because having, when you, when you get to know all the story, you will say, how did he endure it? Well, the, the part, the big part of our message for this evening is all about enduring. That's what the title says, staying faithful under trials. So here, Job is a real person, and he's been mentioned in Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, 40 to 12, wherein uh, the Bible says, uh, pertaining to the judgment on unfaithfulness. Now the word says, the word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when a land sins against me by persist persistent unfaithfulness, I will stretch out my hand against it. I will cut off its supply of bread, send famine on it, and cut off man and beast from it. So in the 14th, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness, says the Lord God. So, so you see, Job was mentioned in Ezekiel. And the same goes with um, James 5, 11, where uh, James 5, 11 had actually encouraged me to read and study the book of Job. Sorry. If I have not put there... Okay, Mark 5.11 says, we are to look on those people, from, for those um, uh, prophets from the Old Testament, and Job was mentioned in it, the righteousness. So you see, and they suffered afflictions, but they endured it. Their steadfastness, their, their enduring all the, the pains and sufferings that they have been um, undergoing. So that is why when I, I I forgot to put the 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 verse here, but it would be great if you could have read it. So anyway, so see, Job is a real person, and it uh, it was believed that Job existed even before Adam. So so let's get let's get started. Let's get to know Job. So, who is Job? So, let's get to know his character and his wealth. So, in Job 1.1, 1, 1, he was being introduced. There was a man, so it, was, it is like uh, we, are, we are telling you a children's story. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. One who feared God and turned evil of uh, turn away from evil. So from here we can say that Job is a good person. Amen? Yes. 
he is blameless. For him to be called blameless and upright in the Bible, so he must be really, really good. And by the way, Job, um, in the succeeding verses, we will we will find out that he is a very rich man. So here, when we say blameless, is it possible to be blameless? He is upright. He is the one who feared God. In our previous um, message, we said we 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 learned that fearing God can lead to perfection of our righteousness, and He turned away from evil. So that means we see Job's Job's direction of his character. See, he feared the he feared the Lord, and he turned away from evil. So, mga kapatid, if we are not turning away from evil, if we do not fear God, then it is impossible for us to be blameless and to be upright in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, what was what must what must we do? We turn away from evil. We run away from it, as what um, the Bible says, right? Run away from the temptation. If there is any temptation, you don't have to to face it yet, oh, because you know that you can handle. When you are in a temptation, if you are always putting yourself in the line of or in front of temptation, then by all means, yung guard po natin is your walls natin will be broken. And gaano natin ka Yes, we believe that the Lord will will deliver us from temptation. He is faithful. God is faithful. He will provide a way out so that we can we can uh, overcome every temptation. But if you are always baiting yourself, you are always putting yourself in the in the face of temptation, then how can you? Even David uh, I mean, even Joseph, the dreamer, ran away from the temptation, amen? When he was tempted by the wife of Potiphar, he ran away. Kasi atang ni Joseph, he is wise enough to run away from temptation. Kasi we are still in the flesh. And if we keep on feeding, or if we are allowing Satan, if we are giving Satan the foothold para makapasok yung kasalanan sa atin, then that's the problem. So brethren, how how can we how can we win the temptation? Run away from it. Amen. Resist. Magaling, no? Ang bilis lang pala. Ang bilis lang pala ang solusyon na ng problema natin sa temptation. Run away from it. So, there were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Praise God. And he was very wealthy. Napakayaman ni Job. And in fact, he was considered as a great uh, the greatest of all people of the East. Uh, East here refers to the East of Israel. And it was believed that um, it was the land of the Edomites. So you see how, how, how wealthy or how rich Job is? He was having the time of his life. He was having many servants of his disposal. He was having so many livestock and even people respected him. The mga tao don, they are they respected Job so much. So you will see the daily life of Job here. In Job, uh, Job 1 verse 4, it says, His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So you will see, um, they are always having this, this, um, 
gathering of his family. So they always have, they are, they are preparing some food and they would invite their sisters, their families to eat with them. So this is how their lifestyle or their life goes during the time. So, and when those days, when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and conse consecrate them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it, not, it may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. So you will see Job is a good father. Amen? We are aware that during the time they have to offer to God for consecration. So see how good how good he is as a father. After thou ng mga kasayahan nila, Job would send and consecrate them. So ang gagawin niya, mag-offer siya lagi. After, every after ng feasting nila or yung gathering nila, Job would do this. Kasi ang sabi niya sa sarili niya, it may be that my children have seen and cursed God. Alam mo yun, yung hindi naman niya alam because he's not an all-knowing. Amen? But as a father, he took it as a responsibility. Responsibility ko ang mga anak ko. And even to that point of offering or consecrating them because maybe in their hearts nagkasala sila sa Panginoon. Maybe in their hearts they cursed it God. Maybe Unintentionally, they have sinned to God. Amen? But as a father, you see, he would do this for his children. So that is what Job does continually. How about us as parents? Who are parents here? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And as parents, we always wanted the best for our children. We always wanted them to be saved. Amen? We always wanted them to have the good life even if they're spiritual. Amen? We wanted them to know God more than providing for them the food, the clothing, the material things. We wanted them to know God. Now here comes the testing. So in Job 1 verse 6 to 7, so it says, Now we were, we were taken to the courts of heaven. Before it, uh, Job was being introduced, who he is, what is, uh, what he is as a man, and uh, what is his relationship with God. So here, now the Bible brings us to the heavenly courts. So now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. Isn't it shocking? <laughs> Satan here is being described, not here only, but the Bible describes Satan as the adversary, the enemy, the accuser, the thief. And what is the, the ultimate um, job description of Satan? He can kill and destroy. He comes only to steal to kill, not to destroy. So that is why, if you are wondering right now, why am I suffering? Because Satan is working 24-7 for you to doubt. Satan is working 24-7 for you to be what? Discouraged. He will do everything to keep you out of focus. We all have our own job. You are inclined to do all the admin jobs. Amen? Amen. Pero din si Satan, 
and he's very dedicated to it. He's very dedicated to his job description. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. To steal your joy. To kill your relationships. To kill your finances. And destroy your relationships. Destroy your focus. Destroy your good things that you receive from the Lord. Yan po ang gusto ni Satan. Kaya kung natatakpa tayo ngayon, if we are ever wondering why we are suffering, then we have to know that we have an enemy. We have to know that spiritual is real. That spiritual realm exists. Amen? And if we do not know that, that there is a spiritual warfare going on, then consider yourselves a casualty. Victima ka na agad. If you set aside your spiritual walk, then you are considered as a victim already. Diba? Just like a real war. Only those who are the militaries, the rebels, they know what's going on. But the civilians, they don't know anything, amen? amen? So always, the civilians left being the casualty. Sila ang victima. They die first. The innocents, amen? amen? So that is why, brethren, if we do not know that there is a spiritual warfare going on, that there is a spiritual war going on, that we don't believe in it, then consider yourself as the first victim. Then don't blame God. Because oftentimes our our attitude will be, Lord, why? Why are you allowing this? Tama? First, we have to educate ourselves. Pinag-aaralan na natin yung mga bagay-bagay na hindi naman talaga naglalas eternally. Amen? Why don't we study the word of the Lord? Because sabi ng Bible, people perish. Because of lack of knowledge. Amen. That is why it is very important to know the word of the Lord and what it says because the Bible is our manual of life. It is our guide. It is the word of the Lord for you and me. Hindi lang po yan nandyan as an ornament sa gilid ng bahay natin. Hindi lang po yan lang nandyan buksan kunwari para lang kunwari nakabukas. We should study it. Night and day. Isaksak natin sa mga puso natin yan. Isaksak natin sa mga kukuti natin. We should learn. We should know by heart the word of God. Kasi kung takot kayo sa gera, physical na gera, mas matakot tayo sa spiritual warfare na nangyayari. Because Satan is very cunning. He's very subtle. Sometimes hindi na natin na nalalaman that we fall into this Trap is Satan. Because we do not know. So here, it says that the sons of God pertaining to the angels are having a meeting. So the Lord God calls them. And Satan was himself was present there. And he is able to communicate with the with the Lord or with the God with God. So, when the Lord questioned Satan, saan ka ba nang galing? Saan ka ba nang susuot? And what did Satan answer? Kung, kung sa, sa atin pa yan, ayun, maglalakad na ka na ko doon. Pabalik-balik. Diba? Bakit kaya? Why do you think he do this? 1 Peter 5, 8 answers us. Sabi niya, Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So if you do not know Satan, if you do not know what is his job, then you will be devoured. Grabe no? So that is why I encourage everyone. Let's learn the Bible. Let's study the Bible. Because this is our, our manual. This is our, our, this is 
Like telling us what to do while we are still here on earth. This is our instruction. This is for our rebuke. So that Satan cannot have a foothold on our lives. Amen? Amen. Paano natin, paano natin magpuprotektahan ng mga sarili natin kung hindi natin kilala ang kaaway? Diba? Ano nga yung book na sinasabi ng The Art of War? Kailangan kilala nyo din yung kaaway nyo. Hindi lang puro sarili natin ang kilala natin. Minsan nga, hindi, di ba? So now we know what Satan does 24-7. He comes and goes. He comes to and fro. Up and down. Left and right. Looking for innocent people who does not know their identities in Christ. Those who do not know that they are over Satan. That they have the authority to trample Satan. If we do not know that, kawawa naman tayo. Diba? Kawawa tayo. And that is why the Lord is so faithful. Sabi niya, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. The devil or Satan is very scheming. He will do everything to trap us. He will do everything to make us believe or to make us believe that whatever we are doing right now, even if it is a sin, it's alright because everyone is doing it. Amen. It's alright to do this because my neighbors doing, are doing this. My colleagues are doing this. So it's okay. And much more, we do not know what the Lord really wants for us. So agad-agad. Pasok agad tayo sa trap ni Satan. Amen. So that is why the Lord said to us, put on the whole armor of God. And what, is, what are those armors? And if it's just six pa rin. The breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the sandals of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the, the, the sword of the Holy Spirit. And that is the only offensive armor. The sword or the word of God. See? Even our armor, it requires knowing the word of God. If you don't know that you have this armor, so again, you are bare. Bare naked. Waiting for the lion or Satan to devour you. Isn't it? So it is very important that we know those things. And how do we know that? By continuously studying the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's continue. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? So, the war begins. <laughs> So the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth? So see how the Lord commended Job. He is one of a kind. He is blameless. The Lord is so well pleased, well pleased with Job to the point of boasting him to Satan. There is none like him on the earth. A blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. So even God Himself. Hindi lang ang Bible, hindi lang kanina nung nilaray. Pati si God, pati si Lord, sabi niya talagang pinatotohanan niya or He confirmed that Job was blameless, He turns away from evil, and He is upright. Then here, here's what Satan said. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for no reason? Diba? Accuser talaga. He is such a liar and an accuser. Diba? Even the Lord himself, an all-knowing all God, 
said so, but still same time want, wanted to distort the fact. He wanted to twist it. Diba? Because he just wanted to accuse. Sabi niya, does Job, does Job fear God for no reason? Do you think that si Job is blameless or fear you because of no reason at all? Wala lang? Does it ring a bell? Ugali ng tao. Sometimes Satan is right when he accuses people or man. Diba? Marami tayong kakilala. Sometimes we are one of those. Mabuti lang tayo or maayos lang tayo because we get something in return. Satan here is telling that Job is just being good to you or being blameless or righteous or he feared you because he gets something from you. Para lang ATM, pagkailangan ko kukuha ako. Parang ganun ang sinasabi ni Satan na kaya lang yan mabuti si Job kasi may nakukuha siya. Sabi pa ni, ni Satan, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and all that he has on every side? Napakaganda nito. Hedge around him, his household, and all that he has on every side. Have you heard about the double protection? Sabi niya, Pagkali ako si Job. God put a hedge or a protection, a mantle of protection around me. So, meron na. And including my family. Kayo, family ko. May hedge din kayo. And all that I have. So, you see, even Satan acknowledges that when we put our trust to God, God is hedging us. So that is why it is very important to always pray or to always ask for hedging. In every day of our lives, pagising, hedging agad. Lord, I hedge myself, my family, my company, and all that, that all my possessions, all that I have, I, I am hedging it with the precious blood of Jesus and nothing that the enemy can do. There is nothing the enemy can do against me because we are hedged by the Lord. Mantle of protection, imagine that. Parang, parang kinumutan. Alam mo yung imagine na mantle? You know, we are hedged with a mantle of protection. That is why whatever is going on around us, let us rest in the confidence that we are being hedged. So it is very important tayo as parents, as family members, as friends, we should always ask them. The moment we wake up in the morning, Lord, thank you, I have woken up. Lord, hedge my families, my, my company, lahat po, kailangan po yun. We, we should always do that and we should not uh, we should not neglect doing the hedging. Amen? Amen. So here, sorry. So, sabi, sabi ni Satan, you hedge him and everything that he has. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. You, but stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to face. Sinalens na yun ni Satan. Satan challenges the Lord. Sabi niya, take out your protection from, from Job. Stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. I'm sure. Sure na sure siya, no? I'm sure. He will curse you to face. How many of us did that? Kunting pagsubok, kunting hindi nasunod ang gusto natin, prayers na na-delay, kunting pasakit na naramdaman natin sa buhay, then we retreat our pain to God. Ayaw ko na doon! Ayaw ko na to! Or Lord, what's the what's the what's the use na may faith ako sa iyo? Na lumalapit ako sa iyo. Lalo pa nang lumalapit ako sa iyo, Lord. Bakit? Why is this happening to me? Parang drama lang, no? Lord, bakit nangyayari sa akin to? Ngayon pa. So you see that
the, the truth here is that both good and bad people suffer. Amen? Amen. Yung mga masasama, they suffer. They experience pain. And they experience um, afflictions. Good or righteous people do suffer as well. Pero bakit pag ang, ang, ang mga sinasabi natin unrighteous ones or ang, ang mga unrighteous that suffer or they are in pain, our response is that, ah, ganyan yan. Kasi ang sama niyan. Diba? Parang okay lang sa atin. Parang expected na natin na magsasuffer sila. Amen? But the irony is that when a Christian or a righteous person suffers, ang tanong agad natin, Bakit, Lord? Why? Hindi naman sinabi ni Lord na when you are a Christian, you will be free from suffering. Amen? Amen. You are not storm-free, but you are storm-proof. Let us rest in the, in the confidence that the Lord is with us, fighting for us. Sabi niya, you just need to be still and know that I am your God. Amen. How comforting is it, right? The Lord is telling you, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Amen. Diba? So why why complain? Why complain? Why complain, my friend? So let's move on. Sabi nga dito sa Psalms, Indeed, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Do not be dismayed, go if you are if you are experiencing pains or trials, because the Lord is our shield. The shield belongs to Him. Amen. 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 And then in Genesis 15, 1, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, "Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your exceedingly great reward." The Bible is telling us that the Lord is our shield. So why why be afraid? For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in her knees. See? So many scriptures telling us that the Lord is our shield. Let's proceed. But, but stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will press you to face. So round one, kasi mahaba-haba nga na to ng laban to ni, ano, ni Lord at ni Satan. So he challenged the Lord. So indeed the Lord had lifted up his protection upon the household of Job. And here's what happened. Sabi niya, and the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So sabi ni Lord, Okay, sige. Gawin mo kung anong gusto mong gawin sa kanyang nasasakupan or whatever that belongs to him. But just do not kill him. Diba? Nakatakot na no? So in the next chapter, Job lo loses his property and children. In Job 13 to 15, it says, Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were uh, donkeys feeding beside them. And when the Sabaeans raided them and took them away, indeed they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Umpisa na. So, his servant came. Amo! Tinatay ang iyong mga servants. Ninakaw ang iyong mga alaga. So, even before finishing what he has to say, sabi niya, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, and consumed them. And I alone have Okay, to tell you, grabe, 
one after the other. Grabe na pagsubok to, di ba? And again, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, the, the Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, and took them away. Yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone had escaped to tell you one after the other after the other. Hindi lang doon natapos yun. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. Hindi ka kaya iiyak niyan? Lahat na lang. Pati pa mga anak ko. Let alone all the 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 mga alaga. But my children, Lord, diba? Sana kaya tayo niyan? Kung tayo yan, ano na kaya ginawa natin? See? Imagine that all of this oxen and donkeys attacked and stolen by the beings, sheep and servants killed by fire and lightning, camels taken by Chaldean servants killed, sons and daughters died by hurricane and the house collapsed in just one day. In just one day. Just imagine mo. Kaano kasakit? Kaano nagsuffer si Job? In just one day. So what did Job do? Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. Kaya ba? My question is, ating lahat, kaya ba natin yun? Worship Him. Can we worship the Lord amidst our sufferings? Amidst our pains? Have we tried that? Praise the Lord. If that is the case, praise the Lord. I really do praise the Lord. If we can still worship Him after all those things that happen. And He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And finally, the Lord said, "In all the, the Bible says, in all this, Job did not see nor charge God with wrong. Karabe. I salute Job. And he acknowledged God still. So niya, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed, na blemes pa niya ang pangalan ng Panginoon. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's shout po. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And because of that, Job did not sin. He did not charge God about it. Round two. <laughs> Sabi ni Satan, I didn't touch Job. Yung family lang niya, as the Lord allows. So by the way, ano po yung natutunan natin dito? From the first round of our story. Number one, spiritual realm is real. It exists. Amen? Amen. Number two, Kasi ang akala natin, pain and suffering comes from sin. Yes, it's true. But hindi lang po yun. Pain and suffering, here, we will know in the succeeding verses, Job, sinisi, uh, parang inano niya ang Lord, he, he, he thought that the Lord was doing this to him. But now we learn that it is not the Lord, it is Satan. It is Satan's doing. Amen? So, round two. 
Satan has asked Job's help. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present, to present themselves before the Lord. Same scenario. Meeting with the sons of God or the angels. And again, Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Same question ng tinanong ng Lord. San ka nang galing? And same answer Satan gives. From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth. Wala nang ibang ginawa si Satan kundi maghanap ng mabibiktima. Then the Lord said to Satan, Kinomen pa rin niya, Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth? A blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still, eto, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without a cause. So you should bear this in mind. Pwede talaga tayong pakialaman ni Satan. Without a cause, ha? Wala lang. Gusto lang yung manila ng buhay. Ganun siya eh. Diba? To steal, to kill, and destroy. Remember that. Be strategic. Kailangan, kilala natin ang kalaban natin. Kilala, kilala. Now, this story exposes Satan. So, alam na natin dapat by this time who Satan is and what he does to us, to our families, to ourselves, sa mga possession natin. And we should be watchful. Be sober-minded, sabi ni Peter. Sabi niya, kahit sinubo mo na siya, pinatay mo na ang kanyang mga anak, kinuha mo na ang lahat ng meron siya, still, he holds fast. Or he still holds on or cling to his integrity. Let's be like Job. Kahit ano mga pinagdadaan natin, let's hold fast or integrity. Diba? And then, so Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. How true is it? Diba? One of my preaching before, sabi ko, napaka-important sa atin ang buhay natin. Especially when we do not know the Lord before, lahat siguro nung meron tayo, ibibigay natin in exchange of our lives. Amen? The moment that a person comes out that meron siyang malalang sakit, he will give up everything. Lahat ng kayamanan niya, Kung pwede pa lang ma- ma- makabili tayo ng another extension ng buhay, we will do that. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Amen? Kasi when we are here, yun yung pinakaan sa atin. That is why, recently, I-, I am so thankful to God with all that is happening around, yung mga viruses, yung mga, di ba? Sa dami-dami nangyayari, a lot of people are killed. Mapapaisip ka talaga. You will really think about life. Amen? Amen. So, Sabi ni Satan, always may tama din si Satan, no? May tama talaga. Sa mga pinagsasabi niya. Kasi, Satan has been observing us. Ina- tinitingnan niya yung mga weak points natin. At doon siya nag-penetrate. Doon siya pumapasok. Diba? Are we, sa ano ba yung mga weaknesses natin? Isa-isahin natin. Ano yung mga weakness, weaknesses natin sa, sa ating mga sarili? Then be watchful. Guard your weaknesses. Doon kayo dapat mag-concentrate kasi lagi, or the, the, kung saan ka na napa dati, doon ka ulit titirahin ni Satan kasi alam niya na iyan yung witness mo. Amen? Amen? So, be on guard. So, sabi niya, oh, skin for skin. But stretch out your hand now. Sabi na naman ni Satan, sige, alisin mo na naman ang protection, at alisin mo lang ang protection mo sa kanya and touch his bone and his flesh and he will surely curse you to your face. Gusto talaga ni Satan na i-curse natin ang Panginoon, no? Doon siya masaya, eh. Kasi yun yung gusto niya, na higitan pa ang Lord, kaya nga siya, kaya nga siya na, ano, di ba? Na palaya sa heaven, kasi gusto niya, higitan pa si Lord. Higher than your throne. They will worship me. Gusto niya ang worship. Kaya the moment that you are cursing God, be careful. Pinapasaya niyo ang si Satanas. Be careful cursing. Sinisisi natin ang Panginoon. Diyan, 
Pinibigyan natin ng, ng pagkakataon na sumaya si Satan. Gusto niyo ba yun? Sabi naman niya ang pagmamahal sa kaaway. Amen. So, sabi niya, And the Lord said to Satan, grabe yung tiwala talaga ng Lord. Alam mo, the Lord sees our hearts. Di ba? Nakikita talaga ng Lord ang heart natin. And the Lord sees the heart of Job. Na alam niya na kahit iba, na i-allow niya, Job will never falter. Hindi talaga ma-ano si Job sa mga skin si Taneng, ni Satanas, or ni Satan. And the Lord said to him, to Satan, Behold, He is in your hand, but spare his life. Sige. Pakialaman mo yung buhay ni, ni Job. But the only thing is, do not kill him. Spare his life. Kahirapan mo siya, but you cannot kill him. So you see, what, what can we learn from this? Yes, Satan has power. Probably. Yes, he has power. But our Lord is more powerful than him. And Satan is subject to God. So there is nothing that is walang pwedeng gawin si Satan that the Lord will not allow. Kung baga, he can just do that because the Lord allows. And of course, being an all-knowing God, a sovereign God who is in control of everything, alam niya, hindi ka bibigay. Amen. Amen. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Painful boils. Ano ba yun sa Tagalog? Pigsa. Pigsa ba yun? Am I right? Yes, pigsa. And who had experienced this boils? Can you tell me how painful it is? It's really harsh, right? It's really painful. Sorry? And you will have fever. So here, painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Lahat ng bukakawan niya. Imagine the scorching pain that you are going to feel. And he took for himself a pot shirt with, a, with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Kawawa. From being a rich man. From having all the servants at his disposal, now he is alone. A kiss, kiss, a piece of glass. Kini kiss, kiss niya yung he's scraping off the 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 boils or the sores. Tito, imagine how pitiful Job was at that time. Eto, this is the worst thing. Then his wife said to him, "Do you still hold fast to your integrity?" Curse God and die. Grabe. Nag-iisa na lang na tao na dapat na who will stand by you. At ito yung sinabi niya. Naniniwala ka pa rin ba sa Panginoon mo? After all these things, sa lahat ng nangyari, do you still have faith in your God? Why don't you curse Him and die? Diba? Mas masakit pa yun sa boys. It's more painful than boys. But the thing is, Satan was able to use the wife. You see how Satan really is a mean. He's very mean to do that. Ay, wala naman siya talaga mapapala. Diba? Basta lang niya. He's happy doing it. I, I encourage you, brothers and sisters, do not allow or do not give Satan a foothold in your life. Do not give him the victory to be happy. Dahil lang sa mga reactions natin sa mga pangyayari sa buhay natin. Pero anong sagot ni Job? How did Job answer, answer his wife? You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Parang katulad ka rin ng ibang mga babae. Walang ano yung sinasabi mo. Walang kabuluhan yung sinasabi mo. Sabi niya, Shall we indeed accept, accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? Puro lang ba masasarap at mga gandang bagay ang tatanggapin natin sa Panginoon? Puro lang ba blessings? Are we not going to accept adversity ng mga pagsubok? In all this, Job did not sin 
hand. Amen. Let's trust in that, or let's rest into that comfort that the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. Because at the end of this story, the Lord had done so much blessings and good things, and everything is 200% restored to Job. So, let's be, let's be faithful. Let's stay and remain faithful amidst our trials and afflictions. I'm sure the Lord, we will learn, we will learn, because in every, in every suffering or in every situation, it's not only lesson. There will be a lot of things that we can learn from it. Hallelujah. Let us all stand.